These two pieces of UC Berkeley's Memorial Stadium used to be lined up. One of California's most treacherous faults runs right through this campus, as well as near cities like San Jose and Oakland, which are epicenters for tech innovation and economic output. You normally can't see it or feel it, but the ground here is always shifting. The energy released from this fault has culminated in a big earthquake on average once every 140 years. The last one was roughly 150 years ago. We may now be on borrowed time, so what can be done to protect us from the big one? We can actually see here that the building is designed to accommodate the movement of the fault. So we can see one side that's moving past the other side as the fault slips. So we know that there's movement of the earth. Can we predict when an earthquake is going to happen? Unfortunately, no, there's no evidence that we can predict earthquakes reliably. The thing that we have at the moment is earthquake early warning, and that can tell you that an earthquake has happened and that you're about to feel shaking. The shaking is caused by waves that travel through the Earth's crust like ripples on a lake. And it's those ripples that the sensors of an earthquake early warning system detect. Some of the most notable earthquake early warning systems are the ones in Japan and the ones in Mexico City. Mexico City's earthquake alert system, called SASMEX, was created in response to the devastating earthquake of 1985 that killed more than 6,000 people. Alerts have been available to residents in portions of central and southern Mexico for more than 20 years. When a major earthquake is detected, the public is alerted via TV or radio, or one of the municipal speakers like the one across the street behind me, but all of them don't always work. This was the first building that I saw that had been damaged by the earthquake. In 2017, Wall Street Journal Mexico City correspondent Robbie Whalen lived through two earthquakes that were just 12 days apart. The second devastated the nation's capital. Did you hear the alarm in your office? I did not, no. It was a total surprise. I was walking on the sidewalk and suddenly the sidewalk was moving. There used to be a seven or eight story office building here, a medium sized office building with a lot of different businesses located in it. Several floors had really pancaked from being about seven or eight feet tall to being about one or two feet tall. So it became immediately clear that it was going to be very hard for a lot of the people in the building to get out. At the end of the day, I think 49 people died in this building site collapse. There was an earthquake a couple of weeks before, right? What was that one like? It was felt in Mexico City, but it wasn't nearly as strong. And did the alarm system work in either of those situations? What was that like? In the earlier earthquake, citizens of Mexico City had something like a minute and a half or two minutes of advanced warning that the earthquake was coming. For the second earthquake, the uh, early warning system was not as effective. I think there was a few seconds of warning for most people in the city. When earthquakes are close, you have very little time. Professor Gerardo Suarez of the SASMEX Research and Development Team has been studying Mexico City's seismological activity for the past three decades. Distance is really key to being able to alert people. Are there things you can do with the sensors that would help minimize that distance? Yes, we try to make the algorithms uh, to work as fast as possible. It's a catch-22 situation. You, you want the algorithms to very quickly identify it in the seismic waves that it's detecting to say, yes, it's a large earthquake, let's, it's a go. But on the other hand, you want to be careful because then you cry wolf very often with small earthquakes and you have to be very careful of not issuing false alerts. Back in the U.S., the team at UC Berkeley Seismology Lab is helping develop ShakeAlert, the country's first early earthquake warning system. They've been researching earthquakes for more than 100 years. Some of their findings were used to develop the system in Mexico, which currently only has about 100 sensors. ShakeAlert already has roughly 1,000 sensors along the West Coast. Earthquake detection hinges on data. In theory, the more sensors, the more data, which should translate into earlier and more reliable earthquake warnings. How accurate is ShakeAlert? With the largest magnitude events, it's very difficult to estimate exactly how big it will be. So I will certainly not say that we will get the magnitude 7.6 earthquake right on the button. Towing the line between not crying wolf, but still alerting users of noticeable shaking can be difficult. The ShakeAlert team got a lesson in balancing these two opposing needs earlier this year. Two strong earthquakes hit Southern California, but the LA Pilot app failed to notify users that either were coming. And the reason behind that is because neither of them surpassed both the magnitude and the intensity thresholds. With the first earthquake, the magnitude 6.4 earthquake, ShakeAlert actually did a pretty good job of estimating the location and the magnitude of the earthquake. The predicted shaking in LA wasn't high enough to surpass the intensity shaking threshold, and that's why no alert was sent for that one. 
With the second larger earthquake, the magnitude 7.1, our system did actually underestimate the magnitude a little bit. Now they're using what they've learned from the LA pilot program to prepare for the Bay Area's shake alert system. These really large earthquakes, they take time to rupture. So if an earthquake is still happening because it takes eight seconds to rupture, and we're only using three or four seconds of data, we actually don't know that it's going to get bigger. So we need to try and adjust our algorithms a little bit to try and make sure that we're really capturing the size of these really large earthquakes. If it were to happen again today, the system would already perform better because of these things that we've learned. The U.S. system is aiming for cell carriers to transmit earthquake alerts, similar to how we get amber alerts. Are there any technological roadblocks to getting the message on a cell phone to users quickly? If you have a lot of people that you're trying to send a message to in a very short amount of time from a single cell phone tower, it can kind of create a bit of a blockage there. And so trying to get the alert out to lots of people at one time is definitely a challenge. Because as you said, every second matters, Every right? second matters. So if there's a 15 second delay, that's not going to be terribly useful for people who are right next to the earthquake. Right now, there are pilot programs for the ShakeAlert app in portions of California, Oregon, and Washington. In addition to the mobile alert-style notifications from ShakeAlert, there is also talk of creating hardware, similar to a home smoke alarm or a carbon monoxide detector, but for earthquakes. This one was created by Mexican startup Grillo. No matter what, early earthquake warning systems are not a replacement for preparations like an emergency supply kit and a safety plan. Their best case scenario is giving people enough warning to duck and cover in the final moments before the big one hits.